Yeah, okay. So, Gautam, are you ready to think about what we've managed to do in the past, I'd say, 13 or so months? Yes, yes. I've been thinking about it all afternoon, kind of as prep for this session. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so can I start off by asking you, yes. what are your top highlights? So my top highlights are uh, I think the testimonials that I we receive from students. Uh, after after we conduct the cohort and uh, when students talk about what they felt during our sessions, those are kind of my top highlights. Uh, the fact that somebody said, uh, one of the students said that uh, they felt like they were back in their grad school in in berkeley that was that was amazing that was that was a one of the big highlights and when somebody said they were willing to pay kind of 5x the amount that we actually charged for that cohort that was one of the top highlights. so the testimonials really stand out i think that's what really made it for me that's what about you so awesome because that was the first thing i wrote also i mean okay. both actually conducting you know and online business, so to speak, that's the first for me, right? So conducting it, finding complete strangers, respond yeah. to our message, and then come, not only come to us, but then also be blown away by what we take them through, and then come back to us after that to give us these testimonials and give us these high ratings. And of course, the other highlight that makes it all the more fun is doing it with somebody who's also a childhood friend, right? So. The whole thing became for me in the last day. It wasn't like, oh, I'm so nervous to start something new, but it was like a fun exploration. Most of it was actually that way, especially the beginning. A couple awesome. of other highlights for me also were uh, doing this whole thing online native. So which meant building credibility online, like starting my Twitter account, which I hadn't done ever before. Yeah. But then actually having... <laughs> Yeah, and then having a voice and having something to say on that account uh, with respect to this. So that was a big highlight. Again, what we both did together was write the newsletters, which is another form of channeling your voice to reach people that want to hear your message, or at least trying to find the people that resonate with what you're offering. So that was the second sort of highlight, I think. And then a more personal highlight was like taking it seriously the fact that I want a remote first kind of work life so that you know I can rearrange and optimize and design my life around other priorities so these would be my top highlights that's that's awesome because uh, the first question that I wanted to ask you was uh was some, something along similar lines but uh, like uh, if you think about okay that this was year one for you as a creator right uh, I, I wanted to ask what specifically have you ch like changed your mind about the most right like a 180 that is so crazy i've literally written that down as my second question okay. like what changes in mindset so i can absolutely tell you what uh, i've thought about the first was as you said thinking of myself not just as a teacher uh, but also thinking of myself as a creator and an entrepreneur. It's true that I had done some original work before this, right, as a scientist, but I wasn't thinking of myself so much as a creator and an entrepreneur that wants to subsist on the creative creations. It, it wasn't uh, quite that mindset. It was a little bit more of, oh, I have to explore and then but see, this, this, I think this change in mindset also gives me a little bit more agency to take on more roles and I think that will also bleed into what my second uh, change in mindset was which is that I started thinking of the other roles of business and started seeing myself in those roles for example marketing was something that I had a huge mindset change about over the past year and you know it very well right yeah, yeah. so prior to this I had always thought of it as being somewhat dishonest. I couldn't pinpoint why. It's like, oh, it's somewhat dishonest or it's somewhat underhanded. But it's not that I knew marketers personally or that I'd done something or that I felt tricked by anyone. I'm not sure what it was. But once I started doing it, I realized it was simply about communicating truthfully and honestly and clearly what you offer and then attracting audience that wants that. 
it's yeah. just as simple as that absolutely uh, yeah. at least in my case that's the way i wanted to do it and that was a big revelation it didn't occur right in the start it took me a few months i should took me several months and then i had this type of moment that okay this is all it is so i felt more comfortable in in doing that because we both you and i both figured out that we have to do more of marketing right that's the only way to yeah. reach more people um and one more i think a uh, change in mindset i would say is increased flexibility yes it's true that i wanted to design life around remote work and flexibility and all that but just how much you have to be willing to be flexible to other people's availability or working in different time zones especially when you're working with people around the globe and then also uh giving up a little bit of the sense of control when things don't all go exactly right and uh, also finding the bare minimum tech setup that you need no matter where you go yeah right and so giving up this idea of perfection of needing everything to be available at you know for you to start creating these th- this would be another uh sort of learning or i don't know another flexibility i had to okay it just makes things more seamless and you allow things to happen when you're not so rigid anymore i felt and so that's exactly what i wanted to ask you like from where you come from what might be your changes in mindset or learning sort of like what what was surprising so uh for me uh i think my, my mindset changes was something something very specific uh so i was uh, thinking from of additional products revenues and growth etc i think i have really shifted my mindset into taking consulting more seriously because uh, uh for you to sustain for, for us to sustain ourselves as as let's say solopreneurs or or, or not solopreneurs you know both of us doing it together as a small team trying to build digital native products right there is uh, we have to factor in the reality that these products will require a low a lot of marketing a lot of audience building it's going to take its own sweet time for us to so sustain ourselves to ensure that we are able to pay the bills and get you know uh, get our life in order we have to open up ourselves to consulting assignments and that will bring in that will really bring in the revenue so that uh, i've sort of embraced because the, the other one is a time consuming process but uh, having said that uh, i'm i'm able to confidently think consider consulting only because i know that we have a that we have two shipped out products that are ready to good to go and com- mature in some sense right that that gives me a lot of confidence that i'm not just going after one assignment after another like one consulting assignment after another it's it's more of okay there is there is something that is is in the productized form ready to offer good to go the moment and there is there is a uh, let's say a critical mass of audience who wants it that's been the one big mindset change in my end besides that uh uh again uh i i one the other the other aspect is i i thought it's going to be very easy working in an uh catering to an audience that is one time zone away or completely opposite time zone that's not been easy for me personally uh that i found kind of very difficult i thought i could pull it off now that how to how to circumvent that challenge or how to navigate the challenge something i have yet to figure out but that's been that's a, that's something that i clearly know for a fact that no it's not a sustainable way of going about things so yeah something very specific but yeah these are the big ones that come off the top of my head actually that also nicely goes on my next one which was what were your biggest challenges yeah yeah this is, i think it's, i start off with uh, one time zone challenges second uh, sitting out of india and trying to attract a us based audience making myself more and more available for conversations the fact that i have only a small window in the morning and evenings kind of derails my life in a big way that's not that's not been easy at all in fact it it creeps into a lot of other aspects of life uh it does lead to long term if i'm if i'm doing it recklessly i i know it lead to mental health challenges so that's that's been that's been honestly the biggest challenge for me i even when i when i joined a course myself right uh, that i was part of right to passage i found it very difficult also it was not easy it just consumes consumes you completely and it's not easy to maintain the moment i got off it i started being more considerate well yes revenues and other things suffered but the mood definitely improved so that's the, that's definitely been a 
been a challenge that i've been struggling with but it, i think it also uh, it also leads to uh, me seriously considering can there be a temporary relocation or how do i navigate this how do i get in, get get how do i get closer to the time zone because i know that, that that's the market that i want to serve so yeah those questions remain nice what about you that's so interesting because for me the time zone was not much of a challenge yeah. it was in some ways it was mainly because i could only get you at these yes you know same the mornings and the evenings and we had several discussions and since we were co-creating and we were very closely co-creating we had to yeah. uh keep talking to each other that was part of it but at least uh i recognized that it was infinitely uh, maybe not infinitely but it was a lot easier for me because the audience was somewhat close to the time zone that i was in uh so for me the challenge really at it on me was uh not finding a market regularly like especially after finding the first couple of students for the uh, sorry first couple of cohorts get filled up fast and then realizing that we have to do a lot more work to continue finding the market i realized that that was a challenge because what that meant is that you have to continually uh communicate right and tweak your messages and keep going after uh various channels of communication keep experimenting so that was a challenge not an insurmountable one but yes that is definitely a challenge because i didn't know anything about it and i think i'm still in the process of learning a lot about it um and then uh a couple of other challenges would be how to continue to try new ideas when some fail to come to life so right. uh sort of it, it, I know that it's something that you keep practicing but then you've got to have this system where you keep trying it and then knowing when do you know it's right. not taken off or like agree uh you know when when do you try something when, else or when do you yeah, change when do you, when do you, when or, do you actually stop or pause and reflect the right moment and before you move on to something else or uh, how long do you try further that, that's that's a tough one to answer correct yeah and then to not you know be too attached to it or not get demoralized or not question all assumptions because that's the other tricky part is suddenly one day you feel like okay i have to throw the baby with the bath water right like that's it i'm done absolutely, and that that happened very rarely but it has happened maybe once or something but uh, yeah how do you find that balance where you keep learning and responding to these market needs or whatever it is you want to call them and then also aligning the signals that we get from outside with what we have to offer and keep yeah uh, you know keep going that, that, that actually cycle. yeah that actually brings up uh, another challenge to my mind so uh when we actually do an outreach when we are pushing out our messages when we are trying to communicate to our audience both i think what the the approach that we have taken is communicate in high quality uh offer them dense material like th- very well thought out material long form essays that are not easy on us a lot of not easy to write up not easy to generate versus the popular wisdom out there or i wouldn't say wisdom popular advice out there it's like the the reason you communicate often is to ensure that you stay on top of the audience's mind right that, that's been a, that's been a hard one for me to balance uh like practical uh, the practical realities force me to accept that common advice and see you have to have to be out there more and more often but again what i like to do is churn out high quality stuff but that again takes time so that that's been a hard one to kind of balance in and, and uh, have consistent output around yeah i agree and that's a in some ways i like that challenge because it makes me to learn learn by doing actually yeah you know, the only way to go about it is try different things and see what works and as you rightly pointed out what is also sustainable right 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 I actually want to take a slight departure and ask you a different question. Uh based on what you've seen happen in the online education space all the I mean now you I, I think you've had one, in one year you've had a quick overview of all a lot of stuff that's out there in the online education space. What do you what do you like to see less of? What do you think is just because that's that uh, in one year I just want to know because it's significant for how to see we how to be see significant for us and significant for the ecosystem in general. 
Um, one thing I like to see less of is always is bad courses, right? But of course, how can one judge what a course is like unless you take it? Yeah. Uh, but what I can refine that to say is just badly designed courses. So what I mean by that is, uh, you know, if you want to be a live sort of online course, cohort based course, then, you know, put in the effort to have good live sessions. Let it not just be a lecture that's transmitted live, you know, which can be viewed, which can be as well recorded and viewed later. Let that not be the case. I think a lot of that is still happening. They call it a live course, but it's just one person lecturing an audience. It might as well have been recorded and there's not much interaction. So uh, putting in more effort to really make uh, the time worthwhile spent both by the person that's teaching as well as the audience by engaging in more interactive sessions, I think would overall increase the quality of engagement of all parties and generally just uh, community engagement will improve and learning and outcomes will obviously improve if that effort is put into designing it, right? And yeah, that, that's one thing that on top of my mind, I can think of. Got it. As an answer to the question, from, yeah. yeah, from my end, the, well, it's specific to how courses are marketed. There are a lot of, since uh, COVID has opened up online courses market in a big way, there are a lot of courses that are marketed saying that this is like a, like this will fix your life. It could be something very small. For example, I, I don't think I can ever claim that learning how to build a cohort-based course is going to fix your life in any way, right? It's just, the, there's an overall push around, this massive push around courses offering, this is it. If you do this, it's going to happen. That marketing, I think, has to has to go. That kind of marketing has to, just, people have to move on. Like the ones, the marketers themselves have to feel that this is not going to work or the people listening to it has to feel that this is not going to work. And the, the, I feel that that's a wave that I'd like to see pass. So that's one thing, that's one less thing that I want to see definitely in the online education space. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. So I guess I have one more, which is okay. what next for you? Uh, what next for me? So uh, from the, from personally, I, I have to ensure that uh, I bring in some uh, revenue from somewhere so that I'm able to continue doing this uh, and also <clears throat> give this, uh, do not, uh, not put undue pressure on what we are doing to bring in that amount of revenue. So I, the effort is slightly already underway. Uh, but at the same time, uh, on from the how to CBC front, I think I really want to focus on ensuring that I set up a like sustainable consulting business. And that, that's, that's one thing I, I think I want to think about and see what, what what can be done because it's it's very much in the ballpark and that can it can it can lead to a lot more people us interacting with a lot more people show, being able to showcase our work that's one thing but the big thing that i'm uh, really looking forward to is uh, the show that we want to launch this year the edupreneur show so that's one thing that i'm really kicked about because that means that it it it's it's uh, both like in a, in a way both of us have been in the education space for such a long time right we've seen for example you have seen what happens in the highest echelons of academia organized academia i've seen what happens in the unorganized of people starting up and uh, trying to run courses etc so both of us are very much entrepreneurs in that sense right with rich experience now it would be lovely to talk to other entrepreneurs out there figure out what they do how they go about it how they got the users what are the challenges what is what new exciting thing are they trying uh what what are, are people using chat gpt in education it's a lot of uh, very interesting questions to ask and i'm sure there are very interesting answers out there from very interesting people that's what i'm most excited about what about you that's nice that's nice uh so for me i guess just write more create more explore more and in particular i think this year i want to focus on trying to engage more meaningfully and that includes attempts like ours with the show yeah 
uh, but in all forms of communication basically engage more so that uh, oh, like conversations said, yeah like we have a pulse of what's really going on so that uh, you know anytime we do it we serve our audience better if we know our audience better we're going to serve the audience better so with that i want to be a little bit more mindful about that also and really amp up on the engagement also and learn how to do it properly meaningfully and just i mean authentically right because awesome. i think i do think we have uh, we have stuff to share we clearly have stuff to share that has resonated with some people it's resonated yeah, strongly yeah. it's not it's not a yes, lukewarm yes. response yeah, yeah yeah and that's what gives me faith that you know if we learn the ropes of some of these things and we just put ourselves out there more that uh, it, there's some Absolutely. fun to be had i i agree i agree as in uh, so there is a lot of confidence that i have in uh our products plus us as a as an like us together are doing something that i think that is that that we we hitting the spot in terms of quality just to figure out get get more people to know about it so that that, that i'm supremely yeah. confident about i want to ask one more question okay just off the top of your head who do you think because you you you've had a a good preview of other creators out there people doing very interesting things who are the top creators that sort of sort of you know you you got inspired by or you saw saw them being very insightful or you saw their output being great just a couple of people who just off the top of your head okay so my answer is going to be biased towards people who are still like smaller in the follow yeah. account or whatever right uh maybe i resonate with them more because they're starting out i also see myself as starting out so uh there's there's a couple of people whose newsletters i really liked so uh and also their tweets uh there is lanin on twitter as well as bishaka both of these people uh have very interesting experiments i think they're doing i consider them experiments so let's start with lanin she has basically been building in public and she has uh, done a really good job of documenting what it is she tries every week so starting from whether or not she wants to do a cohort based course to what it should be about so and, and being very open about it like truly in the spirit of building in public so for me it was very nice to see how she processes uh, these various decisions you're constantly making and these various questions you have and how do you go about getting information how do you go about you know finding the right data to and give you some pointer or where to head next uh with vishaka she had this uh, newsletter she still has it i'm sorry uh, called the unlearning lads and the name itself was kind of very interesting for me right like what is she unlearning so that uh, is how i got interested in that and she has several uh, nice takes on habits that you probably had and that she wants to unlearn them now and just overall in terms of uh, learning she has several good pointers and factoids and she also shares her journey so these are two people whose journey i am following uh, somewhat in close quarters i say of course there's always a the big accounts but then i feel like they're very big and i don't really know how they got there so for got me it. the two shoutouts would be this how about you so for me a uh, couple of things that re- uh, one uh, more than creators i think it's specific acts that stood out for example mm-hmm. ayush I used to have this interesting challenge where he would launch something every Wednesday for 25 feet straight. I felt that was like I I knew I I sort of had a feel that this could this is this will lead to burnout. I think I himself knew it, but at the same time it was it was amazing watching him do it uh, regularly just uh, going at the grind doing it and uh, and then and then really going for it and you know irrespective of what happens. him really giving a shot and then actually pr- producing that result right like actually shipping something every 25 weeks and, and then yes at the end of it cl- like being open that you know he felt burned out but that's the, like he went for it like went for it and actually produced the results that that was amazing to watch second is uh, uh, a larger account but some somebody who's been improving their writing consistently over the years and it's vishakan veeraswamy uh, on twitter again amazing amazing in depth writing and very reflective writing It puts puts into uh, words a lot of the thoughts that i've had over the years and does it amazingly well 
and also manages to connect so many people bring out so many smaller accounts writing to the surface that's been amazing to watch those two creators really stand out for me somebody who's really pushing the limits in terms of business and outreach somebody who's really pushing the limits in terms of high quality content yeah nice nice cool that okay, pretty much so sums that... up all my questions yes yeah that brings me to the end of mine too so let's hope for a good second year and we'll okay. keep our audience updated on what we're going to be up to maybe in the next video Okay bye bye All right thanks for tuning in